Hi guys, this is Jordan with Motion Array. Today we're going to learn how to create a classic time lapse. We're going to go in depth with what to do, some common mistakes to avoid, and how to take your time lapse to the next level. So let's get started. So we're going to get right into it. How do you actually create a time lapse? There's two different ways that you can really go about creating one. The quickest way is to take existing footage and speed it up. Not really the greatest, but it's still technically a time lapse because even video in and of itself is just a bunch of still frames played in succession. But what we're really talking about is a series of photographs taken over a long interval of time, specifically so that you can show the passage of time. So here's what you're going to need. A camera, a tripod, and an intervalometer. Just like its name suggests, this device is an interval meter, something that measures and tells your camera what interval of time to shoot at. It's really the key to getting a really smooth time lapse, because it spaces out perfectly when each shot is taken, making the speed of your resulting video perfectly consistent. You can get away without it if your camera has a time lapse function built in, like most modern smartphones. But for cameras that don't have this function, your footage will end up looking kind of bad without an intervalometer. Place your camera on your tripod and set up your shot to take a picture. Plug in your intervalometer. And if you're trying to get stars at night, you might need to switch your camera to bulb mode so that the shutter can stay open longer. Now play around with your camera's settings in order to have a properly exposed shot. Remembering that a triangle of shutter speed, ISO, and aperture will impact your resulting exposure. Now think about how long you want your resulting time lapse to be. Let's say for example you want it to last exactly 5 seconds. How many pictures do you take? If you plan on having a 24 frame per second video, you go 5 seconds times 24 frames per second, which equals 120 pictures. For a 30 frame per second timeline, it should be 150, and a 60 frame per second timeline, you'd need 300 pictures. Why does this matter? Well, think about how long you might have to sit there. If you just shot off 120 pictures rapid fire, the end result is that your video would be really close to normal speed, and not really interesting at all. The longer between each picture you wait, the more quickly time will pass in your resulting video. So if you decided to wait 10 seconds between each picture, you'd be waiting almost 20 minutes. On a 60 frame per second timeline, you'd be waiting closer to 50 minutes. You'd better bring something to do, because waiting for that long can get really boring. Now that you have your photos taken, bring them into Premiere, highlight them all, and drag them onto your timeline. These photos will likely be different size than your normal videos that you shoot, not quite that 16 by 9 ratio you may be used to. And the actual size of your pictures will be way bigger. So drop them in, and for your first photo, resize it and reorient it so that you're happy. Now copy the motion section from your effects control panel, then highlight all of the pictures and paste the attribute. This should realign all your photos in exactly the same way. Now you'll notice that when you drag and drop your pictures, they'll each last for about 5 seconds or so. This is totally not what we're going for, so highlight all of your pictures and then right click and go to speed duration settings. From here, manually set the frame length to one frame. Then select ripple edit and press OK. They'll all get scrunched together and each picture will last for only one frame. And when you play it back, you'll get your resulting time lapse effect. Now here's a quick tip that'll help make things a lot easier. If you're adding this time lapse to a larger project, it can really help to nest these clips together. Highlight them all and right click and go to nest. Now your time lapse acts as a single clip made up of your photos. And that's how you make a time lapse, or at least that's how I'd go about it personally. But there's a couple other things that I would caution you on just to watch out for during the entire process. Some common mistakes are once you start your time lapse, never move your tripod. Don't even touch it, just let it do its thing. Moving your camera any microscopic amount will show a noticeable bump in your video, which is incredibly distracting and hard to get rid of. Secondly, never use auto settings. Make sure your controls are all manual. Any exposure changes in between pictures, even if done automatically by the camera, will look like garbage in your final video. So keep everything consistent. Finally, check on your time lapse from time to time during the process. Your camera will likely spit out an image to review before taking the next one. If it just doesn't look as good as you liked, or maybe you left the lens cap on, shutting everything down early and starting again is a way better solution than waiting an hour only to realize you just don't like it enough to put it in your final video. Now we've learned what to do and what not to do, but how do we make our time lapse stand out from the crowd? Let's go over some tips together. Composition. The key is to not rely on the fact that you're going to speed things up to wow your audience. You need any one of those pictures within the time lapse to be noteworthy on its own. Use composition guides like rule of thirds and leading lines to make your picture awesome. Need a refresher on composition? We actually did a video on that. 
take a look if you want, and the video link is in the description below. String 300 well composed and amazing pictures together, and then when you add motion like wisping clouds or stars, that will only increase the wow factor. And that's the other thing, stars. They're awesome, but sometimes really hard to get. It has to be a really clear sky, like no cloud coverage. And there has to be very little light pollution where you're shooting. No streets, cars, houses, anything nearby residential or human populated areas will likely give you poor results. You won't be able to expect the camera to pick much up when you yourself can't really see anything. Next, high versus low shutter speed. Basically, do you want the motion of your time lapse to be crisp and sharp or buttery smooth and flowy? Higher shutter speed will give you a closer look to this, with the objects in motion being detailed as they go by, while a lower shutter speed will give you a lot of motion blur and make things feel like they're blazing by. And it may also give you the illusion that the object is leaving a trail in its wake. This decision is actually up to you. What do you like better for the shot? What kind of an aesthetic are you going for? My suggestion, try them both out, as well as the rest of these tips to try and get better at time lapses. It's really an amazing feature to add to your video. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, we've got tons of other tutorials. For example, we've got this one on how to do a zoom blur. That's basically how we did the effect on going from the phone screen to the title at the beginning of this video. The link to that is in the description below, and you can find the rest of our tutorials at motionarray.com. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.